you can now hear Movie Heaven Movie Hell on Stitcher. Stitcher is ready on demand. Listen anytime, anywhere. Stitcher is an award winning free app that lets you listen to all your favourite shows, plus discover from 20,000 news, entertainment and sports shows. You can also create your own custom playlists. Stitcher is available on iOS, Android, Nook, iPad and in over 4 million car dashboards. It's on demand and it's on the go. No downloading, no syncing, no wasted memory. You can stream your favourite podcasts from Stitcher. Don't have Stitcher? Download it free today at stitcher.com or in the App Store. And please leave us a review and rating on Stitcher. Thank you. Welcome to Movie Heaven, Movie Hell with me, Simon Aiken, and... And I'm Keith Isles, and we are both independent filmmakers who enjoy discussing movies and related topics. And uh, frankly, I'm, I'm still rather stunned that we've, uh, we've actually done a hundred of these things. It still doesn't seem possible. <laughs> I know, but uh, we have. Yeah, yeah. God. <laughs> there's that much waffle out there it's unbelievable <laughs> i know this is all longer than our actual uh film output oh much longer yeah imagine if we'd done a hundred movies wow that 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 i'd feel like i was achieving something if that was the case <laughs> uh, i don't think any i don't think anybody could produce movies at the same uh, same rate <laughs> No, not not with any quality anyway. Hey. <laughs> so, yes, this is our uh, response uh, podcast to the 100th episode. Uh, if you haven't listened to it, uh, stop us now. Go check it out. And, um, and then come back and listen to this one. But uh, <laughs> first of all, uh, we have to thank our stand-in hosts, uh, Rob Wickens and Graham Williams. Uh, yes thank you guys thank for for stepping in yeah no absolutely it was uh it was quite surreal um <laughs> to, to to listen to and uh you, you know I, I guess it was kind of a an interesting way to uh to celebrate our hundred episode but um but but yeah you know uh i know that's what you wanted to do are you glad we did it that way yes yeah um i we we had been talking about it for quite a while, um, I, you know, and how who who we would get on and how how to approach it and stuff. But I felt that um, as a way to celebrate, it would be good to turn the spotlight on our films, and have the movie have a movie hell treatment uh, given to us. Mm. So um, Keith, how did you feel? Having the having the, the the sort of spotlight turned on you, yeah. Well, like I said, it was I really didn't know what to expect, and um, it was it was very uh, it was very bizarre, very surreal. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, you know, it, it was the thing. The thing is, both both Rob and Graham are, are, are good friends, and uh, uh, but y- you know, I've never really sort of to either of them said. Oh, why don't you watch my films, or or let me show you some of my films? So uh, I know, I know Rob had been along to a couple of um, screenings over the years where one of my films might have been in the uh, in in the short film screening. But um, yeah, it it, 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 <laughs> it was just kind of you, you know I had no idea what to expect, and um, you know I I I think they were both very uh, very kind and very respectful about it. So, so yeah, but it did make me feel kind of odd. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, as somebody who always edits the uh, podcast, and I uh, get to hear it in uh, its sort of original form and stuff, it was it was odd to actually listen to a podcast that I had nothing to do with. Yes, but yeah. had my name on it. So yeah, well, um, I mean, mm. we 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 did well because we got Rob Wickings out of uh, out of podcast retirement, and yes. um, to be honest, it was with Rob 
I'd done my first ever podcast, um, which was which was on one of his uh, one of his shows um, with him and Clive. And uh, would that be um, the speakeasy? It would have been. Yes, it was when they were doing that, and they had me. Um, you know, they're both massive Doctor Who fans, and um, was always they were always particularly Clive was always rather surprised that you know a, a sci-fi geek like me. Uh, wasn't actually a massive Doctor Who fan. And, um, you, you know, that they, they had me watch a few episodes that they recommended. And, um, you know, we, we, we chatted Doctor Who for a few hours, which was which was quite surreal because they, they they were the real experts on, on that sort of thing. And, um, you know, you know I, I was just uh, following along. But it was a lot of fun. So uh, it, it's what sort of uh, <laughs> broke my... Um, my, my my virginity in the uh, in the podcast scenario. <laughs> so yes, yeah, I've appeared on the Speakeasy a few times as well um, with Graham as well when we did. Oh yes, the... you and I were with Graham. That's right. Yes, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did another one with Graham when it was the summer uh, summer blockbusters we were looking forward to, and then we came back and uh, re reviewed them. So, yeah, 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 I've done that. And we did um, their radio play. Oh, my God. Yes, we did. Yes. <laughs> so all of this, if anyone wants to check this out, it's all it's all out there online somewhere, isn't it? <laughs> well, funnily enough, if you go to the podcast page on my website, it's all there. It's all there. It's blimey. All there. Well, all oh, my yes. appearances. I don't know about yours, Keith, but mine, mine are there. Yeah. <laughs> prob- prob- probably not all mine. But, uh, yeah. I'm just looking at your podcast page as we speak, actually. So, uh, oh, yes. You've yeah. got something called Movie Heaven, Movie Hell on there. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, it, you know, it, it was good to uh, have, you know, those guys that have both been you know, guests on this podcast, you know, come in to do that. So very, very, very nice of them to do so. But yeah. yes, uh, a, yeah. ve- a very, a very surreal and, and an odd experience. <laughs> so <laughs> for me anyway. Well, for me, I actually, I found it very gratifying because um, sometimes I don't realize what people's perception of my work is. Mm-hmm. You know, it's out there and you don't, yeah, and once it's been out there for quite a while, you kind of you, you don't kind of remember the reaction it kind of got. No, that's true. I, I, mean, I, 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 yeah. I mean, you've got quite, to be fair, you've got quite a bit out there. I mean, mm. you, you, you know, it made me go back and look at your your um, back catalogue, as it were, of shorts. Yeah. And, um, uh, y- y- you know, you've done you've done a fair number. I mean, you've certainly done a lot more than than I have. I'm up to uh, I'm up to seven um shorts now with only only six of them being out there and then the other one is uh, well the other one i have to say as recently this one i did last year um has got into a festival so uh you know there, there's there's the good news this week uh my film taste um has got accepted into the uh south end on sea horror film festival which oh, is going to be nice. in january yeah. uh January 28th, I believe, next year. So there you go. We've got something set up for 2018 already. <laughs> so that's good. Yeah, and I've seen Taste, and it's it's a really good uh, story. Oh, thank good you. film. No, I enjoyed it. Mm. Um, cool. Yeah, so, you know, bringing the numbers up and stuff. So um, just sort of, because the... We sort of listened to the podcast last week and now we're responding to it and stuff. Um, it was kind of curious to hear the things they picked up on, um, mm. especially with your work, Keith. I don't know about my work <laughs> because uh, each film is so different from the others that I I try not to sort of repeat myself. But I, I did like the comment about uh, you always have <laughs> a, a good looking car in your films. You're, you're, yeah, all your stories have cars in them. Yeah, it's weird. And I mean, funny enough, I, I actually do joke about that on a um, I sent both Rob and Graham a link to one of our uh, podcasts, earlier podcasts from 2015, uh, the one titled Overpass Stroke Firepower. Um, Firepower. Yeah, because on that, I do actually um, 
I do actually sort of take the mickey out of myself, uh, which is not unusual, as you know. Um, mm. and, and I did actually sort of mention that. So uh, I sent them that. But also it, it did give a um, a lot of genesis to the, the, the background of that film and answered a lot of the sort of questions maybe that, um, that Rob and uh, Graham raised. So uh, I figured, you, you know, and I thought I'd mention that here because what I don't want to do is repeat a lot of stuff that, you know, we've already got a whole podcast covering. Mm. So, because, I mean, it is fair to say, we, you, you know, in terms of our work, um, you know, in, in the 100 episodes, um, apart from the features and our first short film, um, those are the only ones of our work that we've ever really talked about, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, we, we've yeah. never really sort of delved into any of the other uh, short films um, in any real detail and uh, I don't know whether that was something I don't know whether that's been by design or just the way it's gone or, or, or what really I think um, it's just the way it's gone I mean we could have yeah. gone down that route but then other opportunities presented themselves to talk to other filmmakers and people in the industry and we sort of decided to pursue that because yeah. at the end of the day it's um if it's just all it's, about us, it gets a bit boring. Well, it, exactly. I mean, I find it much more interesting <laughs> yeah. to, to talk to other filmmakers and other film people. And yeah, I mean, I, I think we agreed from the start when you uh, when you invited me to join this podcast is we weren't going to make it about our films and us. It was going to be about, um, you know, the stuff that we're, we're interested in and we grew up being fans of and about film in general. But no doubt, you know, as these things always are, they are platforms to promote our own work as well. So, um, yeah, I think I think I, I, hopefully we've got the balance quite well of that. Yeah. I hope people don't think these are just totally egotistical, um, <laughs> you, you, you know, <laughs> uh promotions of ourselves constantly because um i would hate it if that's how it was coming across <laughs> yeah i mean no, so if people do want to learn more about our work i mean um i know i've got a making off say for blood and roses you've got a making off the uh urban chiller tells because i made it <laughs> you did yeah <laughs> so there's there's plenty of information out there but uh, what what did you think of their picks then for your films well, uh, <laughs> it, it was it was strange because um, obviously I I was in the bizarre scenario with those guys where one of my films was one of their picks for heaven and what, what and the others pick for hell. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. So so I guess I had fewer of my films discussed actually than the, the, than the usual four that that one would expect. Mm. So. Um, uh, I mean, the the only films they didn't touch on at all were uh, Fear View and Cross Lines, yeah. um, which is which is interesting because because Fear View is actually the film that when when I've seen it with an audience has ha actually had the biggest reaction in terms of um, you know audience have actually sort of jump scared at the end uh, which which as i said you, when you make these things you're always surprised that they actually work and then when mm. you see it with an audience they do you think oh that's good so um so so you know that's always had a very good reaction and then of course um cross lines which seems sort of almost it, it's weird it, it, it's weirdly dated in so much as it was made before the the, the smartphone um, became commonplace so it's weirdly dated in terms of its sort of phone technology but at the same time it's kind of I feel sort of very relevant at the moment um, you, you, you know in terms of communication getting uh, you, you, you know garbled and therefore exposing um, things you know which tends mm. to happen more and more in the media at the moment so uh so so y y it was kind of odd that that one um wasn't picked but but you know i mean this is this is the thing that's so wonderful with it uh we hadn't spoken to them beforehand and i've never really talked to them about my movies so it was it was uh really interesting to see what they thought and, and uh um you, you know as i said i think the fact that they were divided on opinion on on one of them on the baby watcher um was very interesting indeed and, and i was trying to sort of 
analyze why that might be. And I think there's definitely something to what they touched on about how, um, you know, Rob currently doesn't have um, children, whereas I know Graham has a young daughter. And uh, I'm just wondering whether that, you, you know, that that might have something to do with with, with the different reaction to it i'm not sure yeah oh definitely <laughs> uh and and people always have different reactions i mean just i mean look at the reviews on imdb i mean take a film that's sort of well loved like star wars and you will find people there who hated it so yes but yeah that's that's a, certainly a factor um i mean having watched your shorts again recently i have to say the um baby watcher it, it's it's a, it's a bit slow to sort of start off with uh but once uh-huh. once you know that there's there's something wrong try not to give away spoilers but uh, yeah, uh yeah. It, it, it's it's actually one of the more tense stories but it's just getting past that first bit to get there i felt yeah no i mean and and, and you know that is that is partially by design and and the reason I say that is yes, uh, a lot of my work, you know, it is essentially in the sort of thriller, stroke, cautionary tale um, type uh, genre for sure. And they, they, you know, they are mainly all sort of set at night and involve <laughs> cars and and people doing nasty things for money and whatever. Um, uh, so, so what what I, what I tried to do, particularly with the urban chiller tales, which were four of the short stories, uh, short films that I made, is, um, and I think I mentioned this in an interview you did uh, on me once, but um, I tried to make them stylistically very different in terms of visual uh, narrative and and editing style, mm. and um, yeah. uh, y- y- you know, definitely after the. Uh, baby watcher came immediately after fear view and obviously fear view um being essentially a car chase a car chase with no money (laughs) was um was very cutty um to try and you you know give it some sort of speed and movement and stuff whereas uh yes um baby watcher indeed was a, a very slow burner um much more colorful um you, you know, in everything, uh, you know, by by design there somewhat. But it was funny because that was the year. Um, I mean, as I said, you've made quite a body of films over the years. Um, and I've, uh, as I said, since sort of 19, 1999 was overpass. And mm. then until last year, you know, I've only actually made seven short films in that time. And um, the year that was probably most productive was 2009 when I made Fear View, Baby Watcher, and Blood What Right, all all within that year, and and you know that included all the post mm. at, at the, and the prep as well. So, um, but but yeah, I mean, def, definitely mine of minor or have been around a sort of certain genre and a certain subject. Whereas I think your films, uh, having recently you know gone through your catalogue again, are definitely a lot more diverse and. Um, you tend to deal with with relationships and, and emotions and stuff like that, as opposed to uh, nasty dark shit like I, like I do. Ooh, so, uh, no, no. I mean, not always. Not You've always. Got some dark stuff as well. Yeah, I was gonna sure. say. Yeah. I was gonna say. I've got some nasty <laughs> shit in them. My very first film is nasty. Yeah. I remember the reactions I used to get for that in the cinema. I mean, it's yeah. just a shame. Again, like yourself, this. The firepower was was the only one of my uh, shorts that was shot on film, mine right. being Super Eight, and it being like super grainy just to get an image in such a uh, low light. Uh, people people who watched the film liked it, said it gave it a kind of like CCTV look to it, and yeah, you know. And if anything, it's it's one of those stories actually I wouldn't mind going back and revisiting redoing at some point but um, but that I, but I, I wouldn't want it to just to be a rehash of what I, or what I did previously because that's already that's there but um, but I mean that's what hmm. you've done that I think's good is is your your films they they are I mean they aren't rehashes in any way shape or form they they're, they're very you, you know, okay, yes, you've got a topic on some of them, like you've you've basically based your 
your upcoming fu- uh, feature around a, a specific topic. But, y- y- you know, you've you've kind of played with those topics. But, yeah, so, uh, y- you know, you've got you've got a fair, fair bit of variation in there, whereas, um, y- you know, I, I clearly seem to get drawn back to um, the, 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 the same type. As I said, I tried to make them very different, but the same type of films which you, you know to be fair were were things that i'd always been inspired by mm. um you know i've i i make no uh no excuse for the fact i've always said that i'm i'm a big fan of the thriller yeah. um particularly suspense mystery stuff and um you, you you know apart from the the obvious movies and the the sort of hitchcocky stuff um growing up uh, as we've often mentioned you know things like uh, Tales from the Crypt, Tales of the Unexpected, Hammer House of Horror, uh, Alfred Hitchcock Presents, you know, all of those kind of anthology type series, which were essentially, um, you know, a series of short films when you when you think about it. Uh, th- those sort of things that always inspired me and, and they always sort of um, dealt with with cautionary tales and, uh, y- you know, reveals and, 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 you know, those kind of film tropes. Um, so, so yeah, uh, you, you know, there are many other things that I want to do, <laughs> but in terms of stuff that I've been able to produce, you know, with my own money on a very limited budget, um, you know, they, that they have been that sort of thing. And of course, w- one of the things, one of the only things to sort of correct the boys on was um and again it's all covered in the in the overpass firepower episode but it i didn't actually write overpass overpass uh. was something i adapted from a uh, a one act play that somebody at um at the film score had written so uh y- y- you know that was my adaptation where everything else pretty much um you know i've i've written as well as directed mm. so um and produced <laughs> oh dear he says with pain yes um i can i just say um there is nothing wrong with concentrating on one genre because we 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 know other filmmakers like mike and clive who predominantly concentrate on horror and you can yeah and you and can they just do see, it very well and they do it very well and it's it's yeah. good that you can you know, build up a body of work within that genre and, you know, become like a a master of that. Uh, In my case, I have have such a varied um, taste in films that I also have a very uh, varied taste in what I make. Um, I, I always look for good stories. And if I like a story, I go out and make it. Uh, It never sort of, you know, it doesn't bother me if it's like a romance or a comedy or a drama or, uh, you know, and sometimes it's worked out and sometimes it hasn't worked out. I mean, um, when it comes to the guy's picks, I was very happy and totally a- agreed with um, their pick for movie hell, which is blocks blocks is not one of my favorite films. And it's, it's, it's just a shame the way it turned out. And you know, to me, it feels like a failed um, experiment, a failed story. I mean, I tried to do something, you know, about writer's block, and I don't think I was very successful. I think I agree with I agree with Rob in the sense that it's not very cinematic. That you have to come up with yeah. something else. And yeah, I was going to say of, that's yeah, that's very true. It's not a visual. It's yeah. it's a hard thing to 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 make visual, isn't it? <laughs> well, that's why in Barton Fink, you have other characters that keep interrupting. It. It's not him sitting in a room trying to type for like twenty minutes or so. Mm-hmm. And also, it's it's back in the day when my films seem to be a lot longer. I seem to take a bit more time telling them. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if you noticed in my work, uh, I sure have, but um, you can sort of tell the films that I made before the feature and the films I made after the feature. Yeah, 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 yeah. The the, the, the ones before are certainly, uh, uh, you know, it would be wrong of me to say more bloated because I, I don't think that's necessarily the case, but cer- certainly... Um, uh, yeah, longer. They 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 uh, 
they take their time whereas is the, the one since are much more um kind of to the point and and uh yeah i mean I, why, why do you think that is is, is that something you learn through the the feature about yeah. a bit more about editing or something is what well, why, why do you think that is let's let's analyze that <laughs> <laughs> um well i think it's a couple of things i mean yes i learned a lot from doing the feature i learned what worked and what didn't work but also the fact that also had the digital SLRs come along right and that opened up a lot of opportunities because because I've shot on video um so I don't know I mean I don't think the video would make any difference I mean shooting with digital SLRs um it was that weird thing of being like shooting on film again where you only had a certain amount of time to shoot, while with video you can shoot for an hour, non-stop. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just, yeah. I, I, it, yeah, I mean, it's whatever I learned, but it's to pin it, pin down what I learned. That is, that's the question because I don't know. Just yeah, you can you can see a change, and I can't really tell you what it was I learned. But I mean, I think just being exposed to f- filmmaking for three weeks, because mm-hmm. I don't know about you, but at the end of every short, I always feel I could go on and shoot more. <laughs> you know, when it comes to the end, after those like three or four days you've been shooting, you think, oh God, I'd love to do more. When when you're doing a feature, by the end of it, you're going, thank fuck, that's finished. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy it's over now. Uh yeah, yeah. I mean, I always want to, you know, I always want to shoot more and do more. And um, uh, but I think I think that every every film that you do, you you learn something. And I think that's you know that's that's part of the. Um, I always say this to people about making shorts um, because, as we know, a short short films are very much a, a calling card, a showpiece. Um, you know that that it is changing, you know, the platforms are changing and there is maybe now more of a market out there for shorts than there used to be. But, um, I always used to say to the students that, uh, if you're making a short film, you know, you should do it for one of two reasons. It's one that you, you, you know, you want to learn, you know, use it, use it as your thing to experiment and learn and try different things. And the other, you know, a story that you're, you absolutely want to tell and obviously the the key is is for it to be a bit of both of those really you know <laughs> but um but obviously a short doesn't have the 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 sell the, the 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 revenue appeal that um that a longer form piece can have um or or at least hasn't had historically uh as i said things are changing all the time now with uh with new platforms and new models so um so who knows what do i know <laughs> this is just advice that i used to give but who knows but i i you know there's there, there's no there's never a the, the reason to make a short film it, it is is usually because you know you 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 want to try something you want to learn something and there's you, you know, you want to say something. You you've you've got this this story burning its hole a hole in your mind that you just want to see visualised. And um and and you know, I applaud anyone that does it because it isn't easy. Making a short film is you know, it it, it it's as hard as making a, a feature. It's just it's it's shorter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the pain is less time, but it's still <laughs> you know. <laughs> In fact, sometimes telling a story, and this is what I think you're very good at, mm-hmm. you say about your films having got shorter, you, you know, telling a story in just a few minutes is actually very hard to do, you know, for it to have a proper beginning, middle and end. And, and um, you, you, you know, uh, that hence why a lot of films that are short are about twists or ab- are about reveals. Um because you know it can sometimes be, be difficult to get that structure in there. Yeah, yeah, and also it's you you want something memorable about the story, and 
a lot of the time when you're making a short film, I think there's a lot of emulation of other films. There's always big influences. And so, yeah. you know, a, a twist is something to sort of go, make people sit up and go, oh, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. I didn't see that coming. I mean, it's, it's difficult. I think doing a twist in a feature um, can be a lot harder. I mean, because the amount of films where you go, oh, I saw the twist coming a mile off. Yes. You know, yeah. there are, are more than those classic ones, but you go, oh, bloody hell, I didn't see that coming. Exactly, exactly. No, it, I mean, it, you know, storytelling and filmmaking craft, I mean, mm. it, it, it's, it's, it's very hard to do. And um, well, because it, it's, I was going to say, it's a craft and it's a craft that you have to learn. It's a craft that you, there's no apprenticeship really. You just have to go out and do it. There's, there's nobody going to go, here you go, son. Here's a camera. Off you go. Go make your shot. You have to do it all yourself. Unless you're very <laughs> lucky. But yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it, it, it's, it's true. And um, uh, I mean, with, with regards to, you know, their picks of, of your films. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I thought was quite interesting in terms of, you know, interpretation, if you like, oh, was yes. the fact that they, um, that they picked post-it. <laughs> yes. And um, again, they, they had a bit of a difference of opinion on it, or certainly a different um, perception of, of, of the film. Yes. And I wondered from, from your point of view, um, you know, the th one of the things we do as a f filmmaker is, is you, you know, we, we have a point of view and, and you know, we, we subject that onto our audience uh, with how we've made the film. Um, I, I just wondered, you know, what were you trying to achieve with Post-Its and what are, you, what are your thoughts on um, Rob and, and Graham's uh, different views of that? Well, I set out to make a mystery. That's that's what I set out to make. Mm -hmm. uh, a mystery with no answers. <laughs> we weren't going to tell you what was happening. We just, well, I just left it open to interpretation. And as you can see, those were the interpretations. Mm. Um, yeah, it's kind of funny because we, when I shot it and I was editing, editing it, I did think at one point, should I just end it with her walking back into the warehouse and going to black and then you just don't know what she's still there she's and I decided no I think you needed that that ending mm -hmm. and I can see Rob's point of view um about it kind of being like a horror setup it could have gone that way um, though it probably would have had to go, uh, you know, running, screaming, you know, trying to, to make, to, to, for it to be a horror, the end, she had to die. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, that's, that's, that's your horror stories going. I don't think I wanted that. And also, um, I don't think I had the the sort of means to do that either. But that's it. Well, it never came into my mind when doing the story. I didn't want it. Uh, I wasn't. I didn't set out to make a horror. I set out to make a mystery. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I was kind of. It was. It was funny to listen to them actually talk. You know, talk it out, and then Rob going, "Well, actually, I'm going to change my mind. <laughs> I'm going I'm to go with blocked instead." Which I was like mm -hmm. kind of happy because when they first picked post its, I was like, really? Out of all my films, post its? <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I think if you set out with, with the intention of it being ambiguous, mm. then, then, then that there alone proves that that was successful because yeah. um, they both had a very, very different reading. Um, of the film, you know, right down to its genre, yeah, um, which is which is interesting um, that, that that you know it wasn't it wasn't obviously set up to be one or the other really, um, yeah. but uh, so so I suppose so I suppose it was kind of a mystery in terms of mystery of what kind of film is this, <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, it, it was really interesting, you know, particularly you know like Rob's sensibilities move more towards the sort of dark and the and the in the horror um 
element whereas you know graham was 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 viewing it with a sort of lighter tone mm. um yeah yeah and and you know i've seen it and and yeah it's it's it, it's an old one because because you, you know uh it's where you work with victoria johnson wasn't it and, yes and you know she, she's she's a very good actress and and quite engaging um for the film and it is it is one of those ones where when i watched it i had absolutely no idea where it was going mm, you know i yeah. was like uh what okay what's all this i, I saw it at a um when, when we used to do the uh uh the feast on film yes um evenings and it, it was it was screening at one of those and i hadn't seen it before and uh yeah it's it it, it, it definitely uh it definitely played out um it, yeah, it, it was it was somewhat ambiguous, and uh, I can see how it could potentially divide people as to whether they're satisfied with the ending or not. Because uh, yeah. because we are we aren't given a a, a, a definite conclusion. Um, you do kind of walk away and make your own mind up about it, and and you know sometimes that can be good, but also some people when they go and see a short film, they do want to, you know, they do want back back to where i lost my train earlier um mm. I, I was kind of kind of say it's almost like a sort of set up you know i almost see short films like um the setup of a of a joke really where you've got uh, you know right, the yeah. punchline at the end it can be a twist or can be something humorous but um but it but it you know it very is it's, it's sort of following that sort of three act um structure as it were and i suppose i suppose if i was to criticize post-its which i you know do think is an enjoyable film but mm. may, maybe that is it it leaves you at the end a little bit like oh okay and and you know but like you said you you you'd set it up as a mystery so i guess that's what you were intending anyway right yeah yeah that, so, actually that reaction is exactly what i'm after i don't want to, yeah oh that was nice it's like oh okay what happened? I don't, you know. Yeah. You know, sometimes yeah. you you want a little confusion at the end. I don't, you know. Yeah. If anything, no. it's uh, you know, it makes it a little bit more memorable. But I mean, at the end of the day, when it came to make it that film, it was down to I had a location, I had yeah. an actress who wanted to work with me, yeah. and so I built the story around that, and that's what right. I came up with. Well, that's I came good. With, I mean, yeah you're working with what you've got which is which is again when when we, when we haven't got a lot of budget and yeah. stuff that that's what we have to do and uh you, you know what 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 I thought was very interesting about this um this experiment if you like where mm -hmm. you set this up with uh with having different hosts for our 100th <laughs> show um and then watching our work is 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 mm. the good thing in this case certainly from my point of view anyway was um even though uh, both Rob and Graham are friends. Um, they don't have a particular knowledge of of, of my individual production. So, in mm. other words, they were able to watch those just as films in their own right without yeah. knowing any of the sort of production history or some any of the problems that I faced during the making of them or anything like that. So they were removed from it like a proper audience member. Yeah, and um, and 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 you know that that was that. I guess that was the interesting bit was just to see, OK, so they, you know, they spent an hour watching all of my stuff back to back and what what have they picked? And, um, um, you, you know, I, I think the surprises for. Well, as I said, it was surprising that one of them picked one film as a heaven and a hello or yeah. a hell or whatever. You, hello, <laughs> as they were saying. Yes. Right. Um, but, all, but also the other picks um, weren't like uh, uh, overpass as a as a movie hell wasn't a particular surprise to me because yeah. you know as i've said in great detail in that other episode um y you know to me overpass is is flawed uh massively but it was my you know it, it was made in the time that it was and it was my first go at have it, interpreting a story my way and shooting on a film medium which obviously gave me restrictions as well so in terms of a learning tool um you know i'm very happy with that but in terms of a finished product then then uh you know i can i could certainly see how um 
and, and I like it that they think that I've matured as a filmmaker as a result and i think mm. well that's good because that's the point right yeah. you want your films to get better not worse <laughs> <laughs> and that was my first one so fair enough <laughs> yeah and there's nothing wrong with like the the first one being bad because you just no but i mean it's like you learn i mean it's like writing scripts so usually the first draft is awful yeah and but then you go right well how do i fix this and that's same with filmmaking it's you, you're going to make something bad and you just, you know, look at it and go, well, what did I do wrong and what can I do better? And, you know, so I don't make the same again. Yes. Um, Working wow. with cars. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. But I, I got to say, um, what I found interesting about the podcast was a quite an honest uh, review of your work because when you're having your work screened, I don't think anybody comes up to you and says, well, I didn't like that. Or I thought that was awful. Everybody comes up to you. Ah, oh, it's great. It was wonderful. Was Oh, great film. Loved it. You know? Yeah, that's true, actually. Yeah. And, it was, um... and it was nice just to have like an, an honest review because great, wonderful. It doesn't help you, you know? Yeah. No, my, my, one of my friends, Ian, uh, who's a filmmaker, he, he often sort of says that is if he goes to somebody's screening of something, even if he doesn't like it, he he doesn't voice that because yeah. he says at the end of the day, you know, he knows how hard it is to make a film and somebody's gone to the trouble of making it and having it um, exhibited, you know, in this in the, at this event. So what? Why ruin it for them by well, turning yes, around I, saying? I, 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 you know, I totally so agree. I, I kind of get why that happens. Yeah. I, and, I, I totally um, agree, and I I can see why you wouldn't do that. And uh, frankly, I'm glad it doesn't happen uh, because it 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 is about that night. It's supposed to be you know a, a celebration of the you know film being finished and it being put out there. So you know you don't want somebody coming over to you and go wow that was a piece of shit wasn't it <laughs> you know you don't want that uh, yeah. but it, it's nice to sort of see a kind of honest review after the fact once you know after a bit of time has, has passed yeah yeah because, well, i mean we yeah. were you, you know we you, we were or should i say you you were kind of uh setting us up with choosing this format because mm. you, you know it is quite a thing to uh, uh you, you know to have somebody um I mean, it could have gone. You know. <laughs> it could have gone very wrong. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I mean, I think both of them were were, were incredibly, you know, respectful and yeah. and and objective and um and 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 kind about it all, really. Um, mm. and you know, constructive criticism is always is always good as yeah. well. Yeah. And uh, as I said, I think they were just they they were just very honest about their um their reactions you know to the work and um yeah but you know was i surprised by the picks uh possibly not the not overpass for for hell but um you know in terms of the heaven picks you know like i said i was surprised that uh, there were some films that weren't mentioned yeah. at all that i was surprised by that i was like oh i'm surprised that didn't get picked actually yeah. Yeah. um but maybe that's a bit of bias in my own head towards towards some of them um, uh, yeah, I mean, we we know which are our good films and our bad films. The one we enjoy and the ones we don't enjoy, the ones that if we we sit and watch now, we kind of cringe at. But um, okay, um, what would your picks be of my work? And I'll tell you what my picks oh, of Christ. yours work would be. Oh I'd, yeah, I'd, prep I'd... me for this. <laughs> Come on, you've uh, you've gone back and watched my stuff, so yeah, it must yeah. have been something that you liked. Uh, the, well, I've got. To... There's, there's a lot I like. Um, well, okay, I'll, I mean, I'll go first then while you're right. thinking about it. For me, um, Crossed Lines was my favourite. Okay. I, I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was, it, it was it was well done. It was kind of funny. I mean, especially with uh, the husband and wife played by Ben Shockley. I didn't catch the actress's name, sorry. <laughs> but their, their setup was kind of funny, you know. Because you can imagine it, that like just just like a normal couple gang, you know. Oh, let's have a bit of fun <laughs> with this guy. <laughs> Ends up ruining his life. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's 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 uh, a cautionary tale again, you know. Um, and uh, 
So with the whole thing about it being like old phones, it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, I think if it had been a smartphone, the it wouldn't have worked because he would have got that email and, you know. <laughs> well, yes, that's true. That's true. It wouldn't have just been down to just the text, text alone. Yeah, so, yeah. so yeah. it, it, I mean, it works I mean, from that point of view. Yeah, cro- cross lines was, was kind of an interesting one because, uh, again, um, you, you know, I wanted to uh, I wanted to get so it was a story that was kind of uh, well, it came out of a discussion I'd had with some friends, actually, originally. And and I said, oh, that would make a really good uh, good story. And, um, you, you know, I had it sort of burning in my head. So put it down on paper and got this sort of script ready for this and had it in mind. And then, you know, the whole thing with 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 me acting in it as well um, Obviously, you know, by this time, I'd, I'd after film school, I'd sort of gone on to, to study and, and pursue acting a little bit. I mean, that was always kind of one of the ways I wanted to get in. And, um, you know, growing up, I had always been, you know, a fan of, we've, again, we've talked on many podcasts about, you know, Clint Eastwood, who, who obviously, yeah. uh, you know, had a massive career um directing and acting in, in in his work um but also you know on this side of the pond um Kenneth Branagh was was was, was I was always a fan of his work and interestingly mm. you know in the cinema now with with uh, you, you know Murder on the Orient Express which um he's not only starring in but uh, directing as well I, and uh, it's funny you bring up Kenneth Branagh cuz when I was watching Cross Lines again just now it had a touch of Kenneth Branagh to it, to his style of filmmaking. Okay, well, Especially, like the Dead Again stuff, you mean? Like yeah, uh, yeah. But I mean, the the whole use of his camera as well. I mean, the whole bit when uh, your character gets the text and the camera's like spinning round him. That's a that's a that's a Kenneth Branagh move. There. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh, maybe. Yeah. 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 Uh, but, well, maybe <laughs> subconsciously. <laughs> I, I'm not sure I necessarily no. set out to do a branner, but no. uh, but 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 you know, um, obviously, you know, when I was younger and and sort of pursuing all this stuff uh, or getting interested in film, um, you, you know, Ken- Kenneth Branner was sort of at the top of his game at that point, and uh, you, you know, as a as a uh, actor, stroke director um, uh, of stuff, and and obviously, it's been you know happening through the history of cinema. Um, but you know, it seems to be even more so nowadays uh, as well, because um, you, you know we've obviously got the likes of, of you, you know uh, Ben Affleck doing this. But uh, even even this season, I went to see um, Journeyman, which is uh, written, produced, directed, and starring Paddy Constantine, oh, okay. um, who had pr- previously done Tyrannosaur. Um, you know, with Peter Mullen and Olivia Coleman, and and hadn't actually appeared in that film, but just directed. And then, of course, you know, now he's done one where he's um, where 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 he's in the film as well as directing it. And of course, um, also he's not in the film, but Andy Serkis uh, is is recently directed a, a a film very different to you know what he's known for. Mm, um, yeah. You know, the film Breathe. So uh, so so yeah, more and more. Uh, you know, I, I always did sort of think to myself that that acting is quite a uh, is quite a good route into into directing, um, and more and more uh, actors now seem to be producers and and uh, directors as well. And so it was kind of a something I'd always wanted to try. And um, you know, I tried it with with cross lines, and of course, being the uh, you know essentially the lead character and and directing it as well it was it was somewhat of a challenge and but you, you know i was always reasonably pleased with 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 how it turned out i mean there's always you know i think we always have niggles I mean, with yeah, our films of course but, we do. Um, there's, there's always something in our films even the, the the ones that people really enjoy there's always that one little thing like, oh maybe i could have changed that or did this yeah yeah i mean in, in terms of your films one i've always said that i really like and i really do mm. um actually is is why i fight yeah okay which um which i feel a bit of a phony saying because obviously uh that was one of their picks right so yes. um yeah so so if i if i had to go with something different to why i fight it would have been um 
again uh, without subtitles but again that was excluded because that's <laughs> going to be part of modern love right that's right yeah <laughs> so uh, but 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 again those both of in both of those cases mm. um weirdly both both starring benjamin green yes. um but in in both of those cases it's it's this switch that you'd made since doing the fit feature where you'd suddenly become extremely economical mm. um with your use of camera with your edit with your whole storytelling um you know both both of those films well particularly why i fight is very very short and very concise but absolutely 100 percent delivers the message um you know gets your intention across mm. and correct me if i'm wrong but with both of those didn't you even use you used iphone for part of it to film yes it, right yes both of those so films yeah just to me shows how bloody effective the and how powerful the uh the iphone is because um y y you know some of the shots are fantastic and mm. and the fact that you 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 achieve that on what uh a good 50 percent of the planet nowadays seems to have in their jeans pocket <laughs> it's is is you know is, is no small feat i think so um yeah it's it's uh, you know i think if i was choosing them i i'd i'd have to uh I'd have to pick those those and again I'm going to seem really boring because it's a <laughs> but but blocked probably for yeah. the for the hell actually because um yeah that's one where it, it just doesn't quite it, it just there's it's just not that interesting no, in not. the nicest possible way Simon it's just yeah. not that engaging um, oh, I know I mean it's, <laughs> it's, it's it's you don't have to sugarcoat it because it's yeah uh, as I say it's it's one I would pick as well and, I've, and for me, Overpass would be my pick for oh, yeah, for yeah. hell. Just Understandably, cause, yeah, because yeah. it's it's a story that could have been told a lot quicker than it does, and mm -hmm. yeah, but yeah, it's almost say, like I had those five reels of fi or ten reels of film, and I'm going to use them. Damn it! <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Exactly, no, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yes. Okay. It is well, maybe it is. that's that is one of the lessons I've learned that even though you've got all this, you know footage that you can shoot you don't necessarily need it no no definitely not yeah um i think i know one thing i definitely don't do anymore which i used to do was that i um would hold on the shot a lot longer so once something had finished i'd still let it go for a little bit mm-hmm but well, sometimes you can get gold if you do that. Like, yeah. Particularly oh, yeah, if you're yeah, working yeah, with yeah. really good actors. Yeah. You know, you can yeah. get some real gold. Yeah. But, I, I, but sometimes it, I, I think I was, I was doing it too much. Right. Yeah. Was, I mean, I remember yeah. a, few, a few years back when I was, uh, I was really into Lost. Yeah. Um, and uh, I used to, you know, I used to get the, the, I used to buy the box sets when they came out and, uh, you know those guys were always really good for for commentaries and stuff on on episodes mm -hmm. and i used to listen to all that stuff and um a lot of the they, they used to say a lot of the reactions cutaways that they'd use in, in lost of the various characters you know obviously being an ensemble piece uh they used to shoot a hell of a lot of stuff yeah um but they'd say often a reaction was what what would what the actor would be doing before the clapperboard even came in yes so yeah. you know before they before they'd even um slated it and shouted action or um literally the moments before they were going to say cut um you, you know where where the the actor would still be in character but they'd be at the end of the scene but they'd they'd just carry on you know looking or whatever with that thought that intention in mind and they would often get you know stuff that would end up in the edits of the uh of the episode so yeah it's it's an interesting one yeah it's an interesting yeah. one but i i guess you're now that confident that you know when you've got it so you're happy to shout cut once you know you've you've got the the, the reaction or the or the delivery that you were looking for right or the frame but it could also just be the stories i'm telling because you know there's um yeah um I, I don't know i mean i i think directing wise i haven't changed much i think my style of directing is still the same i still will hold on that stuff but i may not use it 
as much as I used to. I think it may. I think a lot of it may be down to the editing, because you know, footage-wise, you you got to have that footage. Otherwise, if you don't have it and you need it, <laughs> you oh know. yes, you can't. You can't. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's better to have it and not want it than want it and not have it, or exactly. or better to be looking at it than looking for it. Yeah. <laughs> and my directing style has always been not to shoot the the, the shit out of something. Right. You know, I always come in with a plan of how I want to film it. But it's I never do massive amounts of coverage. I will not cover a scene from every angle going. No. You know? And also, I think also as well is because uh, I shoot a lot of the stuff myself. Yes. Well, this is one of the things I was going to ask about and move on to about your work, actually, is um, in terms of collaborations. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, we've, we've, we've sort of talked about subject matter. And yes, you've... You, you know, you've definitely had some dark stuff in there, but you've you've also you're you're doing a lot with, you know, particularly with the with the uh, the latest feature. You're doing a lot with, um, you know, people's emotions and relationships, right? Yeah. So yeah. so you know, but also um, your collaborations, like you have a very good collaboration with um, Ben Widowus, uh mm. in terms of a writer. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if he's. Re- I, I'll be honest. I've not studied the credits of all your films. I'm not sure how many of your films he's actually written. But okay, I uh, can tell you, he's, he's done quite a few, hasn't he? he he's written. Uh, he wrote Monologue Triptych, which is Primero Segundo to Cero and Blood and Roses. Right. And that's it. Out okay. of my short work. Uh, okay. Benjamin Green, he wrote um, Why I Fight. Mm-hmm. And he was also the co-writer on uh, Without Subtitles. Right. Well, actually, he's the main writer. I, we came up with the story together. So we share that credit. Um, Ashvin Kumar Joshi, he wrote uh, Goodbye and Kareem's Vengeance, as well as directing Kareem's Vengeance. Actually, Kareem's Vengeance is the only film in my filmography that wasn't directed by me. Okay. And, you know, actor-wise, I've worked with Ashvin and Ben quite a lot and um, you know a a lot of the other actors I may have worked with once or twice Um, oh yeah there's Andrew Lorden as well I worked with him a few times but but Mm. but with all of these films then so you've obviously got quite a lot of you, you know you, you've you've you formed some good collaborations mm. with with actors that have appeared across more than one film and 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 obviously writers that have contributed yeah um f- let, let, let's take it one step at a time with with the writing side mm-hmm. um how involved are you in in that is it that you normally come up with an idea they write it and then you work on it, or is it that they come to you with a written piece and then you adapt it? How how, how do you work with 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 these writing collaborations? There's no set way, really. I mean, with monologue triptych, it was a, a fact that um, I was looking for material, and I'd met Ben, mm-hmm. and I asked him if he had anything, and he said I had these uh, monologues written for a, a musician who wanted to become an actor. And he didn't want them. He didn't like what I wrote. And uh, he said, you know, if you want them, you can have them. So I read them. And I felt at the time it was only Primero and Segundo. And I felt like this needed Uh the third part because the guy was such a shit, you know, so (laughs) self-absorbed that I felt that he needed a little bit of karma, you know, retribution paid on him. Hence, and the idea of the the wife going to Australia and taking the kids, you know, kind of because at the time my sister was uh, over in Australia or had come back from Australia. She didn't have any kids, but I thought, you know, what's the worst thing you could do? Take his kids away and not, not just take them away, but take them halfway around the world. So it makes it even uh-huh. harder for them to see. So um, I sort of said that to Ben and he said, oh, that's a great idea. And he went and wrote it. Uh, so, uh, but when it's been with Ashvin, we sort of sat down and we've written drafts and we come back and we, we look at them and we say what works, what doesn't work, you know, um, 
with Goodbye, there was whole stuff that I had written that never made the final film. But then this, again, there was stuff that Ashvin had written that didn't make the final film either. Um, so it's 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 different. I mean, uh, with Benjamin, we will sort of um, why I fight. He came with a complete written piece, mm-hmm. uh, with without subtitles. It's something that you know we came up with the i we spoke about the idea at, at a screening, mm-hmm. and then we sort of you know we went off and then we sort of well, Ben wrote it and I just sort of you know gave my ideas and feedback and you know we we changed a few things but you know a majority of it was written by ben but i I say it it can be it can be quite different and um i always sort of if if my name's on there as a screenplay it's because i have written like a lot of it Uh and if it's not there i might have made changes but i didn't write i didn't you know sit down and physically write anything Uh, right you know yeah, no, fair enough. Yeah. That makes sense. And, yeah. and, you know, there is no right or wrong no. to any of this. No. It's just what works. Um, is is the common denominator, though, on all of your um, films across the various genres and types, etc., um, that, that you've always operated camera on everything? No. Um, okay. <laughs> um I I shot my first film because I didn't feel I could speak to a DOP well enough. And I kind of feel like that sometimes. I feel that the relationship between a DOP and a director, <clears throat> it has to be a really good one. You you really have to be able to sort of talk to each other and sort of come up with ideas and stuff. And, um, you know, I've had some really good relationships and I've had some bad relationships with DOPs. And a lot of the time, I find it's easier just for me to go and set the camera up and shoot it Uh when it comes down, you know. Because when it works well, it is great. Um, I worked with um, Matteo on uh, Goodbye, uh, When the Chips Are Down, Blocked. And I loved working with Matteo. Matteo got me and, you know, I was always very happy to work with him. And then, but then he he moved overseas, and then I started working with another DOP called uh, Richard Wood, and for most part, you know it 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 works rather well. But we could have, we were quite combative at sometimes. He would come uh-huh. with an idea, and then I would say I don't like that idea because of this 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 and this, and I did feel like a lot of the time we were just standing there arguing over what the shot should be when we could just be getting on with and shooting it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, that's the one thing about my shoots. I, 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 they're very fast. Um, uh-huh. I don't like hanging around. I don't like doing hundreds of takes. You know, if I feel I've got it, we move on and I like to move on quickly. So I think that word that comes from as well. So I, you know, over the years I've sort of learned to shoot, learned to light a bit. Um, I mean, that's the only thing I feel my skills kind of lack is on the lighting side but um i'm always on the lookout for another dop that i can work with you know i've i've you know i've been introduced to some really good dops and stuff but i think they got a real i think they have to realize moving on if they want to work with me that i probably will be behind the camera that i would set the camera up and that kind of stuff and i don't know a lot of dops that would be too happy about it because the end of the day the camera and the lights is their domain and Uh some aren't very happy about a director crossing that line yeah well yeah i mean that's a that's an awkward relationship to to strike and i mean you know thing is with a dop is there's there's so much to that role that's that's not that's not just about visual and art and photography and rule of thirds and all that sort of stuff but it's also the 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 alchemy behind it you know yeah. the, the 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 science the math the you, you know and all those sort of things color temperatures and um uh you, you know all of that f-stops and all that sort of stuff so it, it is quite a um 
it is quite a uh, a complicated, multifaceted job. But at the end of the day, it's also a director's medium. So my, my view is always where, yes, it can be up for some discussion, but ultimately what the director wants the camera to see and where it wants it places is up to him or her. You know, so, yeah, it's a, it can be a tricky one. Definitely yeah. it can be a tricky one. And as I say, I've, I've, I've had some, you know, bad relationships with DOPs especially just from like a crew point of view mm -hmm. and so it, it's kind of like one of those things where I feel that at the end of the day it doesn't matter you could be the best DOP in the world but if I can't talk to you what's the point mm -hmm. and I've you know had a horrendous experience with a DOP working on a project <laughs> as you know right you know yeah the whole everybody had a horrendous experience with this guy and it, it's just it it's one of those things where you want somebody you can work with and work yeah. with it on your level, you know, how you want to do things. If you're quite happy for a DOP to go off and shoot and light the whole thing for you, you know, I think you're going to make a lot of DOPs happy. But, you know, from my point of view, <clears throat> I like when it comes to shot composition, a lot of the time it's instinctual. Mm -hmm. I think that's the other thing I've learned is that I can't, I, I do do shot lists, but I tend to do them less now because I like kind of coming there and seeing what's there and trying to go, oh, right, we'll do this, we'll do that. And if you're working with a DOP, a DOP goes, well, where do you want the camera? You know, what, what shot do you want? Mm -hmm. And if you don't know, it's a bit hard. Well, it is, and obviously, there's there's such a psychology ecology to um, to where you put put the camera and and how you size a shot as well. So you know, you know, there's there's certain there's editorial things and there's all sorts there. But um, yeah, but yeah, I mean, it it, it is very complicated, and um, yeah, you know, building building those relationships. I mean, I think on set, it's definitely your uh, your, your your DOP and your your art director are kind of your you know, you've you've always got a couple of people in each phase that you sort of uh, work closely with, even though obviously it goes across everything. But you know, I always think it's kind of like, you know, it's your producer and your writer in your in your pre-production phase. It's your DOP and your uh, you know art director during the actual. Uh, production and then obviously it's your uh, composer and editor or whatever in in the post uh, I know obviously Rob Wickens has been involved in you know he's been your colorist on some of your films but yeah. um can I ask because uh, I, I don't know this do, do you have you edited all of your films yourself or have you worked with an editor on any of these projects I think firepower is the only one I worked with an editor right and that was partly to the fact that because uh, the uh, footage was transferred to uh, Mini DV and I didn't have right. access to that. So um, a filmmaker friend of mine called Mark Grant, he had um, the facilities to do it. And so I was quite happy for him to come on board. And I learned a lot from the guy and, you know, watching him do it and stuff. And it was great. You know, you'd come in and he worked on it and, you know, you see it take shape and everything and um but it's again it's just like i liked being hands-on with that um i don't know mm -hmm. how i would be i know how actually i do know how i would be I, I i'd get antsy i would want to do something if i had, was sitting in a room with an editor and not being able to do, actually edit mm -hmm. i mean moving forwards if i did have to have an editor on board then they would be a co-editor I ha I would have to I would have to be hands on that I can. The 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 hard bit for me is the sound editing phase, uh -huh. because I all I do is sit there and just so yeah that's good yeah I like that I don't like that you know I have no control over it and you are just sitting there and it's <laughs> it's it's one of the hard parts I I'm not a sound editor so even though I do yeah, all these but. Yeah, I know, I just, and, and, yeah. and it's very important. I mean, mm. you know, this is the thing. I again, I always used to say to students that all the sound is just as important as the visual. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's funny how people tend to forget that. But um, but yeah. Uh, so I mean, on to monolith 
monologue triptych. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Mon- <laughs> put, 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 put my teeth back in and stop thinking about Kubrick. Yeah, um, <laughs> monologue tri- triptych. triptych yeah. um, you, you know, again, the the boys pick this or mm-hmm. elements of this um, as as movie heaven, yeah. and um, you know, I've I've watched it recently. I, I realised it was one of your um, pieces that I hadn't actually. Uh, watched fully so um i literally sat down yesterday and watched all or three parts and uh again i think this is something it, for me they work really well and the reason they work well is um you know ben woody was I, I think they're very well written yeah for, for starters because they feel um it doesn't feel like it's trying to be all sort of forced and arty. It it does feel like a normal, even though it's it's not a conversation, it's a monologue. Yeah. But it, it does feel very, you know, bizarrely natural for for, for a monologue, right? Yeah. Um, and and also I have to give kudos to Benjamin Green, um, who who comes across, you, you know, very very natural in this. Um, uh, you, you know that that works, but also. In terms of its simplicity, um, what I like is you're always putting the camera somewhere and somewhere for a reason. You always, it always seems to cut in just the right places. Yeah. Um, but also, you've got some really good uses of insert shot during this. Like, yeah. for example, I love the bit when he's, he's very naturally, you know, preparing the food, preparing the meal – and you seem to know exactly when to sort of cut away to what he's working on. I, I just wondered how much of that was, I mean, obviously you had to shoot it. So, of course, you had to know you needed those things. But you, you said about shooting instinctually, you know, were, were those heavily planned or had you shot a lot of those inserts and then just chose them in the edit? I mean, how how, how did that, because what it felt like mm-hmm. was, you and Ben in a location with a camera, you know, yeah. like like something you could do with with a with a minimal budget and and stuff. But actually, there are quite a lot of people involved in the actual production of this. I noticed in the credits. So yeah, um, yeah uh, talk talk us through, you know, the, the the sort of genesis and the and the and the in the process of this one a little bit, please. Okay, well. I'm not a big fan of monologues to start off with, which is a mm-hmm. funny thing to say for a guy who made three films that are monologues. <laughs> yeah. Um, I always remember the ones on BBC One where somebody would be sitting down having a nice cup of tea, talking about something or another, and uh drove me nuts. Hated them. Absolutely hated them. So when it came to the prospect of making three monologues, my decision was to make it as if the the camera was a person. Mm-hmm. That Ben is talking to you, the viewer, in that room. And that was my whole aesthetic throughout the whole thing, was to make, sh- make you feel like you are in that room, that he is talking to you. And for the most part, I think it works. There's one shot in it which... Um, uh, annoys me f- f- the fact that it was suggested to me by the DOP, by Richard, and I went with it, but in hindsight I shouldn't have, just because it broke the rules that I kind of set out for myself. And, um, you know, not to Richard's fault or anything, you know, he was doing his job, his job is to try and you know suggest the best setups and everything and he did say to me well we've already had these kind of shots maybe make it a little different make it a bit off the you know that he's not looking into camera when the whole point of the film is that he is looking at you so Uh um that's my niggle i had to get it out um but overall i'm very happy with it um we shot it over three days and I did laugh and they said, oh, they used the same location. When we didn't. We actually shot in two different locations in two different parts of London. 
Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> so the fact that it all looks like one place is uh, well, it does. great. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, I, yeah. I, and again, I know sort of Rob went in and, and sort of color timed and corrected everything. Yes, but it, yeah. do, it does it does very much have a um, uh, a very contained feel to it. Yes, and yeah. Uh, yeah. you do. Yeah, it, it does. It does come across like it's um, it's all taken place in this in this sort of one location. And um, uh, you, you know, and I and I've noticed, you know, you've you've got someone credited for 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 a bit of art direction there. Yes. Yeah. And and, and yeah, I mean, you know, just the little things like the, uh, the 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 children's drawing on the fridge, and you, you know, all of that sort of stuff adds to it. And, yeah. Um, and, and you know, it does feel like a a lived in world that I believe you know benjamin inhabited so yeah. oh uh, i mean it's, you, know, you know all crude uh, kudos to uh timothy orman who who did the production design and uh stephanie who came on as um as art director who i then used again for uh blood and roses yeah. um yeah i mean did did a great job uh he brought a lot of the stuff himself you know uh i remember him being a bit of a dumpster diver i remember we were driving past the skip and he went stop and then so i can't do his accent he's like australian but um and he saw this mirror that somebody had just put into the dump and he took it and you know rescued it and uh yeah it was just it was it was a lot of fun i remember the shoot being fun i mean i've got some great photographs where he's sort of just taking the, the, the mickey and just uh you know just you know having having a good time shooting and everything I mean, that's the one thing I always try to have on my sets is it it be fun because it can, you know, because it is intense work we do sometimes or we're dealing with intense motions. And so I always try and make it to be a fun experience because nobody wants a shit experience. I've had too many of those on other sets. And yeah, it's not very, I don't, people set out that to have that kind of, set i mean they're crazy because nobody just want nobody wants to work on it nobody brings their best game to it because they just they just want to get finished you know yeah yeah no absolutely i mean you know, you know it, it, it's interesting because um you, you know this this really does is actually quite engaging and i did wonder i thought i thought to myself you know similar to what you said with your caveat about you know three monologues oh mm. god how 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 yeah interesting is this going to be and um you, you know it is actually uh you know it is nicely shot and lit and well performed and, and and does sort of um does sort of draw you in so it works really well i mean it definitely isn't an anti-smoking campaign ad, though, is it? <laughs> no bloody hell <laughs> i don't know if benjamin is a chain smoker but blimey <laughs> he certainly was on this day <laughs> yeah yeah no um but yeah it, yeah, it all I, kind of added to that artist's yes. uh you know angst um kind of thing and and yeah you know I, I thought it worked really well so i can i can certainly see why why the boys picked the mm. this as 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 their heaven yeah because they both picked it for heaven did they not i'm trying to remember now what did they pick they picked no it was yeah it was that and uh goodbye oh and goodbye yeah goodbye. sorry yes. that's right yeah. yeah and uh yeah but uh no no it's it's it's, it's it works it's 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 uh yeah it's very engaging so um yeah good work there <laughs> i just want to say as well it's funny because um you were talking about uh when you were doing uh the urban chiller tells that it was a, a time of like you know you were getting a lot made and it was same with monologue triptych because i did post it's at the beginning of the year i then did my my goal was to do everything each month for that year and uh unfortunately i didn't quite make it <laughs> um but i do know another filmmaker who did he did a month uh, he did a short a month and he did 12 and um I have to salute Darren Field for that because, you know, that's a hell of an achievement because I tried it and didn't quite get there. It just, it seems to be that I did, I did post-its in January and then I did these two test commercials called Jack and Jill and mm -hmm. then I did Monologue Triptych and the original plan was to shoot it in March. 
but um what i was saying earlier about having a good relationship with a key member of uh the crew in this case i was having such a bad relationship with my dop uh-huh. my original dop that i had to actually had to postpone the shoot it was right. so awful okay well these yeah. things happen they do know. happen yes and um yeah well i think we've covered monologue trips haven't we but uh, <laughs> yes. no it, it was good it was good it's interesting that I, I must admit i had no idea where we're really going with this particular uh, reaction to, to <laughs> what they said i'll just kind of make it up as we go along i know here. so but it's interesting yeah well you know we're <laughs> reacting to it and uh you know but um i f- I sort of, I think to sort of, to to sum it up and kind of get us to the end because we're we're actually the reactions longer than the actual podcast. Was. It is, it is, and also I've noticed, I noticed as well that I, I've, I've, and again, not intentionally, but yeah. I've actually reacted to the films that they didn't mention rather than the ones <laughs> that they did. I noticed I didn't say anything yet about Blood Right, which, um, which. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know, which Graham picked, and I'm I'm really glad he sort of picked up on that, and he said some really uh, really cool things about it. I mean, um, Blood Right out of the Urban Chillers for me, that's the one that I actually shot. So mm. that's that's the the only one where I'm actually the the, the camera op on that. And again, oh. it was because I was going for something um, different to the other stuff. Yeah. So I wanted something a lot more sort of handheldy. Yeah. Um, and up close and obviously, you know, really desaturated in terms of the color. Cause, cause the day we filmed at that, um, that park just off the A4, it was a glorious day with a beautiful blue sky and green grass and really, really vivid. And, uh, you know, in the post-production phase, I actually took all of the color out yeah. to try and make it really sort of desaturated to sort of feed into the rather dark subject matter which um i'm glad uh, i'm glad you know graham and rob picked up on as well because yeah. that is a very 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 dark tale that one yeah and uh it was a way of working with an ensemble um because obviously there's more more characters in that than anything else uh that i'd done and um again i had to sort of shoot it fairly fast and whatever so um you know this is the one where i chose to actually uh operate the camera and i chose to set this very much in the daytime whereas a lot of the other stuff i'd done was set at night um but yes there is still a car scene in it (laughs) 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 and obviously it was very much this whole film was essentially much more about what you didn't see than what you actually see. So yeah. I was filming yeah. all of the stuff that that was that, talking about the expensive stuff that I wouldn't be able to afford to film, mm. like car accidents and assassinations and, you know, all of that sort of stuff. So, um, uh, yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was kind of a, having a go at a different narrative and absolutely, it was scripted as as the boys managed to pick up on and find out where I purposely, when I wrote it, scripted it that the cuts would be on the um, on the on the words starting one scene and, and ending another, and that it would not be in any chronological order. It would be um, sort of sort of mi- mixed up over the period of a you know few months or a year or whatever. Yeah. So again, yeah. a lot a lot of thought went into it. So I'm glad. Um, I'm glad it, it worked. And, and this one at one point was going to be developed into a feature, actually. Um, okay. Unfortunately, it was a project that, uh, as many things do, sadly fell through. Yeah. Um, but there was a time when I was teaching where this was actually going to be done as a, um, uh, a feature through, the, uh, through education. Okay. And um, I was in the process of developing a uh, a feature length version using this story as the spine of the script, uh, and I was even going to re- reunite many of the actors. Um, oh right! And 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 actually reshoot everything, yeah. but 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 using those those actors and that story. And unfortunately, that's just one of those things that happens in this business where 
you know, it comes down to money and schedules and agreements and things of that nature that uh, that sadly didn't come together. So that one got put on hold. But um, but who knows? Maybe it's worth going and revisiting, particularly if the uh, if the if the short film got that kind of reaction. Maybe there's something there, you know? Who yeah, knows? but I mean, again, I mean, even uh, Cross Lines could be turned into a feature. I mean, it's uh, it it's, could. It's a, yeah. a very good idea and stuff. Yeah. yeah, it's it's loads uh, of good ideas, me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it's it's just sometimes the opportunity isn't there, or it doesn't present itself, or it uh, it falls away. I mean, we all, both of us, have projects in our history that you know we didn't get off the ground for various oh, reasons, yeah. including short films. Indeed. I mean, I even I think there was one short film where we were literally getting ready to shoot, and it fell apart. So that's annoying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, these things happen. Anyway, but I hope you enjoyed the uh, our hundredth episode podcast, and I hope you uh, you know agree with our response or or disagree. I don't know. <laughs> we certainly enjoyed talking about the podcast. I mean, it's, uh, as I say, it's different to actually be not an active participant in it and actually just listen to it as a viewer. It's a very strange experience. but uh, It is. And yeah. even this has been because, again, I'm not sure we've gone entirely we've, – we've not entirely kept a topic, but it's just no. interesting where the, uh, the trains of discussion has gone. And, um, yeah. There you go. Exactly. exactly. It's another episode. <laughs> <laughs> we've got we've got some really interesting stuff coming up as well. I mean, we, we we've been busy trying to get some um, interesting guests uh, to join the show and 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 talk about their work and relate it to movie heaven, movie hell, and yeah, um, yeah you, you know, we 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 we've got a few. Uh, bonus and special episodes uh to come so um so yeah absolutely yeah. stay tuned folks it's it's not all about us talking about <laughs> <us>. <laughs> yes uh, and and we might also get a director in there and talk about their work <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i know it's long time coming <laughs> but uh yes this is the way it goes sometimes uh it is yeah Anyway, uh, a lot of stuff to cover. As yeah. all, it's a massive subject. It's a massive subject. But as I said, it's interesting for us to talk about us to talk about someone talking about us. So there you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it it turned out as not as bad as we thought it would be. No, no. it's interesting. <laughs> anyway, let's end it in our customary manner. So yes. Keith. Where can people find your work? Yeah, well, if, if you want to look at these films that we've been talking about, um, they are all available um, online. If you go to YouTube and put in British Isles, which is E-Y-L-E-S, as in my last name, um, those six short films are there for your viewing pleasure or not. But uh, they are there. So indeed, view, comment, whatever, it's all appreciated. And you can find my work on independentrunnings.com where you can find all these shorts uh, as well as uh, extra material like the making ofs. I've written uh, a blog about the makings of uh, most of my films. Uh, so you can find out more information there. Uh, especially, and podcasts. Oh, yes, and podcasts. <laughs> especially old appearances of ourselves and other people's podcasts. <laughs> And you can listen to the show on iTunes, Stitcher, and all good podcast providers, plus that YouTube thing. Uh, you can uh, find us, you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter, just search Movie Heaven, Movie Hell. And please leave us a review and a rating on iTunes and Stitcher, it all helps. So uh, join us uh, for the next time um, for our next episode of Movie Heaven, Movie Hell. Uh, Whatever that may be. See ya. <laughs>